Got a camera turned off. <laughs> Good day. Welcome, everybody. It's John the Net Guy and my wife, CJ. Hello. We are doing a bonus show for you guys. You saw me probably yesterday on Black Friday. She is the only reason that things run around here, I tell you. The only reason I have a YouTube channel, I'm able to do all the cool Net Guy stuff. But I've been getting a lot of kitchen items recently. And so I wanted to share some of these cool things with you. I'm not a good baker, but you are. I can follow a recipe. <laughs> I'm the guy that, you know, puts a little of this, a little of that. We'll see. Baking does not work like that. So just a quick uh, update of what today is all about. We are going to be doing a kitchen tech and gadgets show. It is a little bit after 1 p.m. Let me know in the chat if you guys can see us. I see uh, Jonathan Talks Hardware is already here. Thank you so much, my friend, for joining in. And let us know how we sound. We're in a new environment. I was dragging the equipment all upstairs for the last two hours. Um, I even realized that the oven is now blowing on my console, so it's the hot exhaust. We'll, we'll see. If we shut off in the middle of this, we'll say thanks. <laughs> but we got a lot of really cool stuff to show you. This is my wife's first time on Amazon. I shouldn't say that. First time as a host on Amazon, she buys a whole lot from Amazon. Yeah, a whole lot. <laughs> Don't go in. How many of you guys, let me know this in the chat, by the way. How many of you guys use your Amazon cart? as a wish list because I think she had like 300 items in your cart the other day. They're saved for later. <laughs> it's all in there. Uh, yeah, mine has all tech parts. Hers has all cool stuff. Um, first things first, I have a giveaway today and I haven't plugged the giveaway URL in here yet. So I'm going to move a couple things around. I'm going to show you the giveaway item. She's going to show you a little bit about what we're doing today. We're going to be making cinnamon rolls. Cinnamon rolls and you are making nachos. She gave me the hardest one, as you can see, nachos. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Again, just let me know how we sound. If, if you need me to bump the audio up and down. I do have a second camera angle today, which just shut off on us. So that's the thing with tech, right? You know, I got to go figure out what happened over there. <laughs> let me let me turn the, uh, oh, turn the power on. That helps. Yeah, if you power the camera on, uh, just so you know, that does definitely make it a little bit easier. But we can use this camera for now until we're ready. Uh, first item up real quick is this RGB lamp. So this is our giveaway today. So hopefully you guys can see that uh, the side camera does it much more justice. So this RGB lamp was sent out by the brand. They wanted me to show you all the cool things about it. I said, you know what? Send me two. And if I've got two, then I can ship a brand new one out to you guys. Um, we've got one of these with one of our kids and it's really cool because, you know, they can choose the color they want. You know, our daughter does not like going to bed in a dark room. So this is that first item up, which is a touch lamp. Now what's cool about it, just super easy to use. Just touch it on the side and you can now change color. If you touch it for two seconds, you'll shut it off. And if you single tap, you can turn it on low, medium, and high and white. So it's got one white color. It's kind of a warmish white. These are warm white lights. It's not going to be that bluish light. But if you want to do the RGB color spectrum, you just hold it for two seconds. It's going to cycle through, and some kids maybe like that. It's not incredibly bright, which we like. <laughs> hey, look at that. We've got a couple people. Hello, beautiful people from Randy J, he says. Uh, Randy J also says, sounding good so far. Thanks for the sound check. And if you are on Amazon, this is totally live, by the way. So you can wave at us. You can do all the crazy cool stuff. Um, let us know what you're interested in. Let us know if any of these products are cool for you guys. I'm going to get the giveaway URL going. Do you want to tell them a little bit about what we're making and kind of what stage you got to already? Okay. So a few weeks ago, technically during the illness, we're not allowed to mention a couple of years ago. Um, I got slightly into prepping. And so I started buying wheat berries. Because What's a wheat berry? That's a not wheat, like sweet or anything, right? No, a wheat <laughs> berry is what you grind to make flour, um, but it's not processed, obviously, but it's easier to store. So your shelf flour is stable usually about six months, maybe a year if you store it really well. Um, but wheat berries um, store almost indefinitely if stored properly, and you don't have as many pest issues, so they're easier to store. So that meant I had to talk this amazing guy over here into a grain mill. And um, so the last few weeks we've been playing with our grain mill and um, starting to bake things with freshly ground wheat, which apparently is not the same 
as using store flour, which I had to find out the hard way. So for our cinnamon rolls, I have already proofed our yeast. I've already um, kneaded the bread. So the cool thing about using a mixer, you don't have to knead it by hand for 20 minutes. I got the KitchenAid to do all the hard work for us. So we are ready to basically roll this out and prep our cinnamon that rolls. That will be the next step. So we are going to show the Nutramil um, Harvest Grain Mill. Yes. We're going to show the KitchenAid Grain Mill attachment, which you mm -hmm. can also use, which is pretty cool. Um, so they both work very well for doing this. I was just hearing a bunch of beeps. I think it's Amazon delivering more packages. Uh. <laughs> our pale ma'am just left. That would be so funny if I could pull that up. Oh yeah. my goodness. We've already got, and, and our oh, door opened. Yeah. That was nice. <laughs> Let me go close that. <laughs> there we go. You never know what was going to interrupt the mailman. I think he was like knocking and it just pushed open. But yeah, so we're going to show how that worked. I've got some footage of that because that thing's noisy, right? Yeah. The grain mill is pretty noisy. Even the KitchenAid running and kneading bread. Um, Freshly ground wheat is a heavier than shelf flour, so you need a very um, powerful mixer to knead that bread. And so that even running for 10 minutes kneading is a little bit loud too for this. So we already did that part for you. So we're gonna do that so that nobody has to go through that. Let me go yes. through here and make sure our camera's up. You guys are gonna get to see some cool stuff here. If everything, oh, you know what? There's the GoPro. Okay, so we're using the GoPro on the side. Now you know how we cheat to do this. This GoPro works pretty well. And I'm gonna go past this to there. One more and there we go. So I think we're set up here. Do you wanna show this mat really quick? I am gonna put, yes, I'm gonna put this RGB light over here out of the way. Um, let me pull it up in the carousel. So one of the things that we've noticed, by the way, these things get heavy. This one is definitely bigger and heavier than our other one. And uh, that was gonna be an issue except for this item, which I'm about to pull up here, if I can find it. I had these sorted, of course, in order. So let's put that one up. Mm -hmm. And this is a sliding mat. Now it does two things that I wanna point out. One, it makes your KitchenAid a lot easier to move when you want it to, but sometimes you don't want your KitchenAid walking around. Like we noticed it when it was kneading, it was like, Again, the bread is, or the dough is heavier. And so when this is kneading the bread, when it was on the slide function, it obviously was sliding around, but it does have a grip obviously. So if you put that side down, it'll stay, it stayed put totally fine today. But right now we want the KitchenAid to move. So the two ways to do this, obviously it's got a smooth side and then it's got like that neoprene stickiness side. If we lift this up now, obviously we're gonna have to remember to unplug it lots of times. If we lift it up and now, this thing is literally on the smooth side, right? Two fingers sliding a very heavy <laughs> KitchenAid around. So if you're dealing with somebody that's maybe elderly. Well, even just for us, if we're baking with our kids. I'm not that old. Yeah, well, <laughs> if we're baking with our kids, it's nice because we usually tuck our KitchenAid under one of these, yep. but on the other side, anyways, it's easier to pull it in and out. I don't have to lift or slide it on my beautiful counters. There you go. With its now, if, if you want it to not do that, let me go to the side camera here and just show you a little bit closer up how I did this. So I'm gonna go grab the next one here. So if I take this out and I put it on the non-skid side, like it's not going anywhere. Then you take it, put the same thing down, and you can try with two hands, but it's only gonna move the machine around. It's not moving that mat. So two fingers to two hands, you're seeing the very big difference there on what it can do. Um, and they make this, this is for the Pro 600, the bigger one that we got, the lift, whole lift mixer, I think they're calling it. The standard mixer that we have there, they also have one. Unfortunately, the one I bought, actually they don't have it anymore. So I didn't wanna give you guys one that you couldn't get. So you can actually buy this one because it'll work with both sizes. This yeah. footprint's bigger. So if you ever think you're going to upgrade your KitchenAid, they are fitted exactly to the base, but you can put your smaller one in it. It'll work just fine. They even have ones with red piping, which is kind of yeah. cool. So that's one accessory. Do we want to show the other accessory real quick since we're talking about cords and stuff? Sure. So this one, let me bring this up real quick, is one I just picked up and I have no idea if this is any good or not, right? We're going to find out. But yeah, that was one of the problems that we've always had with the mixers is we basically start wrapping the cord up, right? Or you're trying to carry it with the bowl and the cord and everything doesn't fit. So uh, quick unboxing for you. This is from Aive. Let's see if I've got it in the carousel here real quick. 
this is the problem with Amazon Live. You got to have everything in the carousel. Pull it up. I think I added this one. I don't know if I added it to the show. Give me one second to make sure it's added to the show. I know I added it to my idea list, which I'll talk all about here in just a second. There we go. Now it's added to the show that quick. <laughs> Return to live stream. Here we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on this. Hey, Karen Ann, thank you so much for the follow. This is my wife's first time on Amazon, CJ. I'm John, by the way, if you're on Amazon and you're just joining us, we're going to be doing some cinnamon rolls here in just a second. So first things first, though, I want to do a little bit of cord management. And this cord organizer is now marked in the carousel. And if you are just joining us and you're not on Amazon, there's a link to my idea list in the description. So you're going to see that on the description. I just make sure I'm on camera. So <laughs> there's going to be a link in the idea list on the description there. Click on that. You'll find all these cool products. This one's pretty straightforward to install. And what's funny is they come with a gray and a white one. And we just happen to have a gray and a white KitchenAid. Yeah, so we just upgraded to this one probably two weeks ago. Yeah. So our oldest, who is 19, is going to be inheriting Shh, could be watching. the old white one. He's oh. probably playing video games. Though. He probably is. Yeah, he's, he's big into Apex Legends right now. So I'm just going to slide this around. And what this thing does, super easy. Let's see. I'm going to hit one here just so you guys maybe can see it a little bit better. So this one just fits on the back spine. It's got a sticky adhesive back. So we're just going to peel like that off. Kind of like a command strip. It really is close, but I want to see how it fits like right there. Um, it's a little bit wide and this is curved, but it looks like if you push down, it's going to stick. Now you should be able to take this cord. If I've done it right. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> can, we get, can we get rid of the warning label? All right, we are consumers now, right? We are the end consumers of the product. I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to get rid of the warning label. Ignore this Amazon. I didn't do this on live. Uh, ours just never came with one just because I want it to look cleaner. There we go. So something like that. So what do you think of that? Is that a lot cleaner? Yep. So I that like works it. pretty well. Now the same thing, we might repeat that if we bring the white one out here. Same thing will work on the other one. So that's two products down. Karen Ann, thank you so much. Uh, the slinging mat has a 10% coupon, Karen Ann says right now. So saving a little bit more money on this Black Friday weekend. There's a lot of products here on the Black Friday right now. Um, the mat, if I remember right, let me pull it up here. And just looking real quick. Got, we've got so many cool products on here. I'm gonna have to, to look back on that and come back to it, but I'll pull them up on Amazon in a little bit. Okay, so the next stage, what are we doing? You wanna move the mixer for me? Uh-oh, <laughs> okay. He took the mat away. Oh. I will oh, pull it right. over here. So this next product, let me pull it up. This is another one we got just recently. And I tell you, I'm sold on this. Um, one, my wife likes to clean. Uh, I'm going to say it the nice way. She likes to keep a very clean kitchen and a very clean house. I am about polar opposite to that. Uh, one of the things with these quartz countertops, they're non-porous, but technically our stove, we decided to put our stove in the countertop. It gets crumbs and stuff all the time over here when you're you know, working with kids. So this silicone mat, not necessarily for cooking, you're not gonna throw this in the oven, but this is gonna protect your counter. Well, this one's really large, so it probably won't fit on any baking pans, pans. that you have, but um, yeah. So this one is the larger size. You know what? I'm actually gonna pull up Amazon while I've got this open here and we'll do the uh, Amazon shop. If you guys are just tuning in, by the way, this is John the Net Guy. Uh, I'm joined with my wife, CJ, for the first time live on Amazon. I'm so excited about this. I can see, I, should I tell her how many of you guys are watching? Because this would be, no. Or no, no, she doesn't want to know. So again, uh, give her a shout out. And if, you, if you're on Amazon right now, you can totally hit that uh, like button and show some stars for her. She would love that. <laughs> That's great. So if you're just tuning in, go ahead and visit my Amazon shop page. And you're going to see all the items here. This is the one that I'm pulling up right now. It's from Folksy. Five stars on 17,500 reviews for this mat. This thing is really cool. There are three different sizes. I've marked the medium size one. So this one is uh, 20 by 28, which is going to fit on most countertops. Um, the one that we have here is 36 by 24. So it's a 24 is your standard countertop depth. Mm -hmm. It's all the way to the backsplash if you had yeah. it. So we only did this because our island is so big. 
this side of the island is, I believe, 40 something inches. That side is exactly the same, 36, right? Yes. So it's it's pretty tight. Just so you know, when you're out shopping for these things, the, the larger maybe not be the better. You know, I think there's still a lot. A uh, couple cool things about it, you know, we can go bring. We got to learn to run the camera again this way. There you go. So can you tell us a little bit about what these rings are? Well, the rings are for if you're doing pie crust or anything else where you want to measure the diameter or to help you measure the diameter. And then along the side of the mat, you have a ruler, which is really nice in a minute. When we cut our cinnamon rolls, you'll see that it's very easy to measure an inch or an inch and a half with the ruler here. So very cool. And we make homemade pizza a bunch. We do. So that, you know, was one of the hardest things with homemade pizza is like, okay, is it either round or square? Sometimes we go with the rectangle. And are they the same size? Because we have kids that are like, that person got one more French fry than I did. Like, I'm serious. That's the kind of stuff our kids <laughs> argue about. They so probably deal with that. Too. So you're going to show us, this is a cinnamon roll recipe that we will have linked in the description later if you're checking in on this. Um, and then we have a book later to show about the wheat as well, right? Well, yes, because these are not our recipes. We... I copy really well, or I follow directions really well. I don't know about follow directions well. Well, but... <laughs> recipes, okay. how about that? She follows as good as I do. We, we also do have a bet on whether the kids are going to break into the stream. So if you see a bunch of kids running through here, we only have four today downstairs watching TV, playing Fortnite. Well, that's because our oldest is gone. But <laughs> did you want to talk about this? Um, yeah, I'm going to pull this product up. So this is another one, just a standard product that you're going to use if you're doing a lot of baking. Um, and if you're just transferring stuff, I've seen a lot of people instead, and I'm looking to see if I even have them. I may not have put these in the carousel. Oh, no, I did. They're the pro, uh, dough pastry, uh, scrapers. So you can scrape your items off. If you don't have one of these mats, you can scrape them clean, scrape your counter clean. That would work really well too on pancake batter stains, mm -hmm. other things that might've gotten stuck, but you can also transfer uh, things. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't scrape your counter. It's it's like a knife, guys. Not, I mean, that sharp, but. Yeah, so it's definitely a flat edge and it's gonna help you portion these out. But we're gonna show you another trick actually that I saw. She didn't believe me, but it's really cool. Uh, when you're making cinnamon rolls to get that perfect round cinnamon roll. So we're gonna look at that. So we just pulled that up. You're using another tool already. We're skipping around here. Okay, we got another tool. What's this one? This is our pastry roller. So, especially for our little guys, when we're letting them roll dough, this is a little bit easier for them to maneuver than then, this guy. Then this guy? <laughs> this guy's nice too, but. So that's got two sides on it too. It looks like one side is flat and then one side is convex. So like you can. Yeah. I'm yeah. trying to roughly get a rectangle, you guys, but oops. Ooh, maybe we need the one that has the rectangle marks <laughs> next time i'll take it doesn't have to be yeah okay so while she's doing that i'm going to pull up the amazon page for uh the next product up here that she was using and by the way if you ever need to see where these products are coming from there's my url down below if you're not on amazon which i know this is broadcasting everywhere because it's cool um, if you're not on one of those, the links are in the video description to the idea list to get to all the products. But I did want to show you guys just what that looks like when you go there. Wow. She's fast. I don't want to, I don't want you to lose this, but she's beating me here. Oh, I have to do another one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just showing you real quick here. This is that wood pastry roller. So if you've got little kids that want to maybe help in the kitchen, a lot easier to run one of these. Now I'm going to give you side by side here. So you don't miss anything. <laughs> she's laying out. What is this? This is the ooey gooey filling. This is the sugar good stuff. Now, do we have to split this in half for the we recipe? Do. Okay. Yeah. So we want to do that. And um, let me go back here. So we've used that roller. We've gotten it rolled out. We're getting this lined up. And then... So the cutter is great for cutting the dough. But what we did find when we were cutting our cinnamon rolls is that it actually smushed them pretty bad. So John found a trick from an actual baker. <laughs> Not a home chef or a home baker, but an actual baker uh, for floss. Um, and this is clean, new dental floss, right? That would be important. Can you get me? What do you need? A spatula. Yes. Yes, I can. I'll tell you, when we did this kitchen and it was kind of a half to do the kitchen over, 
we had a water leak. And when we did this, we put the oven in the center and the stove top in the center because we like to cook. And it has been, uh, I think it's interesting. I would say, I would say it's interesting. You know, some people do the dishes in the center of the sink, prep sinks, things like that. Uh, we like to keep our dishes away and our kids in sight. So this has worked out really well. So any sort of hacks we love. Um, somebody asked here, what are you guys making? This is cinnamon rolls with fresh ground flour. So the dough is with fresh ground flour. And then this is our cinnamon roll filling. So it's basically just butter, brown sugar, and cinnamon. Um, you could probably add more like nutmeg and such if you would like. Okay. Okay, probably uh, about we got a comment from a Tim Hunter. He says, homegrown flour can keep longer in the it freezer. Does. So for those yeah. preppers out there. Okay, we actually keep our yeast in the freezer. Okay. Okay, so the next stage, I'm going to get closer up to them so they can see this. The next stage is a rolling stage. Yes, and we're going to try to do this as evenly as possible. We'll see. Oh, I got a comment here from a Jenny X, and she looks like somebody I might know uh, back east. And it says, looks delicious. Mm -hmm. And I got another one all the way from India, another YouTuber, Mr. Mubot. He says, yo, John. He says, food is better than tech. I don't know about that. <laughs> She's probably going to have more subs than I do. I'm just telling you, that's how it works. But if you are not following oh. already, Carrie Ann just, or Karen Ann just followed. Amazon customer number one, thank you for the follow. If you do want to follow, I'll give you a shout out. Tell them what you're doing right now. I am pi pinching the seams because we don't want our filling to fall out. And I'm just rolling it down to the end of the mat so I can kind of see with our little ruler. Okay, I'm going to take this out of the way. Um, unfortunately, I don't know they're going to see the ruler. But okay. um, I'm going to tell you, we have somebody from Qatar. So that's, that's halfway around the world. That's literally halfway around the world. You're going to show them the technique using the uh, item we have in the carousel yeah. right now. I'm going to cut these ends off because I didn't do a great job making it a re rectangle this time. So, But if you'll notice, it really smushed the side. I'm going to put those up there. So we learned... Don't throw those out. I have a trick for later, he does. by the way. Okay. We did that. Okay, so, you ready to you use the dental get, floss? Okay. I will, but do you want to get our pan? Oh, okay. Well, yeah. So these are the Amazon basic silicone mats. We should talk about that. I didn't I don't have that pulled up, but I can. One of the best buys. I think they last probably five to eight years if you treat them nicely. Probably longer. Yeah. Yeah, I know we got some right at the start when we got married, and they're starting to show their age because you're not supposed to cut on these, we found. I've only done that once or twice, but these so, are great. <laughs> yeah. So these these ones are from Amazon Basics. Yes. These are the replacements. That's why they do look so new. We've used them constantly since we've gotten them. Um, they're great for nachos, which I'm going to show a little bit later. And then they're great for what we're doing now, which is any baking or anything where you don't need something to stick. We used them this morning for biscuits. Let me get this out of the way so they can see what you oh. got going here. Sorry. I was going to put this in there. All right. So... Let me do a couple housekeeping things. So she's cleaning up over here. Uh-oh. There we go. If you'll notice, let me just cut a couple more and then you'll be able to slide that in. Now, if you want to cut the other end, they're seeing it right on that camera. Oh, okay. I can bring this over. I can at least run camera for you <laughs> since she's doing all the work. All right, so Shereen from Qatar, thank you so much for joining here. Um, and everybody else, if you're just joining right now, this is John the Net Guy. I have a tech channel, but my wife, she has been doing so much to make that possible. I was like, you know what? I got all this tech, uh, this cooking tech gear. Let's go ahead and do a show real quick. And she volunteered to do this under duress. <laughs> but it's going to be great. I, uh, if you are just tuning in right now, give her some love if she's doing a great job here. This is her first time on Amazon. I think I've been doing this for Oopsie. a couple of years. Uh-oh. That's baking, right? That's yeah. it's not, so it's not the great perfect. thing about the floss versus our dough cutter, which I actually love the dough cutter for just separating my dough and scraping, but we're actually doing the cinnamon rolls. The floss works way better. It just keeps its shape better. It's hard for me to work that way. <laughs> 
Was it a left or a right-handed thing? Is that what's going on? Probably. Super easy to do this trick, though. But again, you're just wiggling it underneath, get it to the line where you want it, and Bob's your uncle. I bet you this is that that flossy floss. I bet you the waxy stuff works even better. Yeah. Because doesn't ours is starting to come apart here. So love the roll slicing hack. You rock, by the way. Good Oops. job. Yeah, she's gonna show these. Now she's got to save one for me. We're gonna take these to some friends later, right? We are. We're going to Friendsgiving today. That one is definitely coming apart now. So maybe it's good for one roll yeah. per strand. Yeah. Is that what it is? Probably. So we're going to do that. We got a bunch of other cool stuff coming up. We are going to let these rise and you're actually going to see the final product live because we got a few more products to go through if you're sticking around. By the way, if you are just tuning in, take a look at the deals that we've got there, but also enter to win this RGB light. I need to say that real quick because I don't want people that are just tuning in to miss out. Um, you do not have to be present to win, but it's always appreciated. So this is the one I was just showing. Um, this RGB light would be great for a kid's room. Let's see if I can put it there. Would be great for a kid's room, night light for a kid that maybe still needs that. We're kind of breaking our kid's habit of that. And it's available on the carousel right now from Amazon. And we're going to do that drawing, let's call it 10 minutes before the show ends, because we want enough people to have a chance. But there you go. There's even the, the different regular three lighting modes. I kind of like that. We're going to set this aside and just cover it. I use a flower sack, but you could use any light towel to cover it while it rises you know what it's getting darker outside so i have to adjust the camera up a little bit in brightness that's so funny so all the things that i don't have to do in my regular studio, studio? downstairs i hear a break in oh, i, I do somebody. hear a kid i hear a kid breaking out i hopefully they're watching them. <laughs> <laughs> you guys might get to see some yeah. of the kids here we we have four still at home and um they are three, six, well, actually almost four in a few days, six, 12, and 15. So the olders are in charge of babysitting. So we talked about the silicone mats. You're going to do this process again. Mm -hmm. So everybody's going to get to see that. Let me get that up on the camera. So they don't like looking at me. They like looking at what you're doing here. So we'll get that up close. Um, on it already. What are some of the advantages of doing your own flower? Well, the biggest one for me when I got into it was that the wheat berries would store for almost indefinitely. Um, and you don't have to, with already ground flour, um, you have to just keep on top of it a little bit more. And we have pretty busy life. And so I didn't want to have to do that. And um, there are some health benefits too. When they process flour, they pull out all the fiber and other good things that come with it. So a lot of people have sensitivity to store-bought flour, but they'll be fine with fresh ground flour. Some people actually have gluten intolerance, so obviously they still wouldn't be able to have this, but yes, you can actually find out more if you want to show that book oh, now. Okay. Yeah, Sue Becker from Bread Beckers. This is her book and she will explain the benefits of um, grinding your own flour way better than I could. And we are still relatively new at this. I mean, <laughs> bought my wheat berries a lot, probably, what, a year ago? Yeah, they've, they've survived yeah. a year. I'm going to bring this over to this camera real quick, just so you guys can see the cover of this. Now, I have not read this book. I read I have. techie stuff, but she has, so. Okay, we'll see if this is a little bit of a better rectangle, guys. Okay. So, mid-show check, how is it? So far, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> I tell you, I was so nervous the first time I did stuff. I was talking a million miles an hour. I couldn't get the carousel loaded. I kind of like this two-person show thing because one person can run the Amazon. One person can do all this stuff. If you're just tuning in, it's John the Net Guy, my wife, CJ, and we're making cinnamon rolls. We did get a couple people. We got somebody named Miller says, hi, cuz. Oh, Christy Miller. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't say. Oh. Um, but we have a Stephen Farmer that comes in and says, no, thanks. It's not 1840. Oh. Well, there you go. We don't have the mill out back. We don't need that anymore. We don't need a donkey to turn it. But um, we do have two grain mills. And we're going to show a little bit of footage of how both of them work. Because yes. I had never heard of this. I always thought you got your flour from a bag. 
and it was bleached <laughs> and it was white and it was cool. And I was like, okay, is this going to taste good when it comes to cinnamon rolls? Cinnamon rolls are supposed to be sweet. They're supposed to be gooey. They're supposed to be all those things. And uh, so far it, it worked. We've had the last couple days we've had them and it's worked pretty well. So let me go through here real quick. So you're going to get this one and we're going to cut it out pretty fast and we're going to go through. You can probably show the grain mills while I finish this. Uh, I absolutely could. Okay. So let me get the first one up here and I'm going to just bring up some stock footage. We'll keep her going over here in the corner and I'm going to move some of this out of the way. If you are just tuning in, there is a giveaway and I'm going to see if I can pull that up on Amazon as well. So we'll get that giveaway going. Um, but if you're just tuning in, there is a follow button down there. Do me a solid, hit that follow button if you want to be notified each and every time we go live. I've got a, like at least a show on Monday, maybe Tuesday, maybe two on Monday. We're still trying to figure all that out. Lots of cool stuff going on here. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the Amazon one more time and just show you some of these grain mills that we actually used from scratch to make this flour from wheat berries. So there's a couple different ones. There's the one my wife always wanted, <laughs> which she finally got, which was from Nutramill. And this one is... Um, I got a slight discount. So in all, all transparency, I talked to Nutramil. I said, I want to show your product on the show. I think it's a cool product. It is one of the best, right? If not the best uh, for home millers. Now there's some other options we'll show today too as well, but um, I got a slight discount and I think it was really close to the price that you can get it for today. <laughs> and that was my reviewer discount. I didn't get this for free from them. I did pay for it, but it is 345 normally and it comes in a ton of cool colors. So if you want something you know, in any of the colors it has. We, unfortunately, can only link to one product at a time. So we have the white, but I remember they've got like a brown, they've got like a pink color. They've got some like pastels, which are pretty the cool. Blue. Yep. For the rim. For Not the rim, yeah. So it is a bamboo. Um, the other interesting thing is you don't clean these in a traditional sense, right? Well, this is a stone mill. So it has two stones that grind the wheat berries. So you don't want to use water on those. Don't don't submerge in water. A lot of the tools that we're going to show you today are don't put in water because if you can't clean every nook and cranny of it and you get water and flour together, they're going to start making their own emulsion <laughs> and you're later going to get sick from it. So we definitely don't want that. To clean this one, I'm showing the rice here. That's another trick. Mm -hmm. um, they do include a lot of brushes and then they include rice here or not. They don't include rice, but they include instructions on how to safely clean it. Um, let me see if I can pull up some of these pictures here. So I'm just going through some of the products. You're going to see a, a little bit of a head of what's coming up here. I'm just trying to see if I have the one handy. See, look at all this video that we have. We have a bunch of video. Um, here is the grain mill in action. It's so, loud. It is very loud, but unfortunately it shouldn't be loud here because we've got it muted. <laughs> but let's see. I want to just make sure that it's going to play for you guys. Hopefully you guys can see that as well really really simple to operate again load from the top and the first time we did this you want to tell them what happened remember I... remember when we made the uh, cornmeal muffins accidentally oh i thought i would start with something easy so i made a quick bread or a non-yeast bread so i was going to make banana uh, sorry not banana blueberry muffins and um on the top that little knob there knob adjust how fine or how coarse the wheat berries grind. And I had it a bit too coarse. It came out a little bit more like a cornbread texture than a fine flour texture like you would want for quick bread. So I'm going to pause it right there. That's flour like you'd buy in the store. You stole my floss. I, I did steal your floss and I probably put it away oh, over here. Here we go. Oh, see there, she's showing you how to do this now with the the regular cutter, but this floss trick works yeah. really well. And you don't need that long of a piece, right? Just probably not that much. Okay, there we go. Just checking in here on the Amazon chat. Does it come with an oil lantern and tuberculosis? No, <laughs> uh, but we're not working in the mines anymore. You know, that's, that's for the miners out there. Uh, <laughs> oh no, pretty funny. You guys are funny. You're cracking us up here. So I'm pulling up the Nutramill and we are watching it mill flour right now, which you totally changed our light. Uh oh, sorry. It's okay. No, it's touch sensitive. This is an RGB light that you can win, by the way, if you want to tune in there on the giveaway. Don't have to be present to win, but you do have to fill out the form. The only thing we use the form for is to contact you to let you know that you've won. So, yeah, we're just doing that with the mill right here. Now, that's one mill Oopsie. option. I'm actually going to pull up the other mill while you're doing this, just for the sake of time. 
which is kind of interesting. So I'm going to pull this one up for you guys to take a look at, and I'm going to pull it up on the carousel as well. So that Nutramil is 270 bucks. Maybe you're not ready for a $270 commitment to try something out, right? Or you don't want another appliance on your counter and you already have a KitchenAid. That's what I would say. Okay, that's a better way to put it. <laughs> so I just like gadgets, so I'm okay yeah. with most of that. But this is a very simple way to do it. You know, again, this is the KitchenAid, the KGM, and one of our kids running in the background on that picture. Uh, but this is how they do their grinding. Now, the grind is definitely slower on this one, right? Yeah, it took a little bit longer to grind your the wheat berries. And um, it, although it does have 15 um, settings, which is nice, um, so you do have some control over how fine the, the grind is. It was fairly, on the finest setting, it was very similar to the stone mill, for sure. Yeah, so that was one thing we were worried about, though, is that it didn't look like it was going to be as fine. Because the stone mill gives you a lot more, I think, granular control, we thought. Mm -hmm. um, so then you can see it's actually putting out flour right there. Then the, the mixer attachment's just spinning away. Um, but it's not actually filling as fast as the other one. So the stone one definitely has it on the speed. So there we go. Not trying to get you guys all sick. We did do this a little bit earlier. Now I'm going to show you guys also the cleanup process. So this was the really sticky mats afterward. We'll talk about those a little bit more. And this is how easy the cleanup process is. Just hot water is taken off most of that super sticky stuff. Normally on a metal dish, cinnamon rolls, not I so I would good. have to soak it. You'd have to soak, you'd have to butter or do something to the, the pan too as well. But these silicone mats make it super duper easy. And just taking a look here. Oh, what a great picture there. There's another one. What do you think? <laughs> So that's, again, us working in the kitchen. And this is a side-by-side -side from the two different mills. If you're just tuning in, this is John the Net Guy, my wife, CJ. We're taking a look at the Nutramill Harvest Grain Mill and the KGM attachment from KitchenAid. you got to save me one of these. I'll save you these two little ones. The two that? little ones? Okay, we'll, we'll do that. Um, because I'm going to show you guys an air fryer coming up here in a second. We're going to have some fun with this. But she's loaded up this completely. And I'm going to come back to that scene so you can see kind of what we've, what we've been able to get in trouble with here. So that's a lot of cinnamon rolls. Yes. So we've got all the cinnamon rolls ready. We've been, I've been standing over this warm oven and you you're going to go ahead and put those in. Is that what the plan is? Nope. I have to let them rise. Oh, oh, see, there we go. I'm going to check the chat real fast. Make sure we didn't get anybody else checking in here. <laughs> Your wife is a pro. Uh, yeah, there you go. Mr. Bubot says, your wife is a pro. I bet she can make this as good with spoons for toddlers. There you go. <laughs> uh, Jonathan Talks Hardware wants this light bad. He wants it for his nightstand, which would be awesome. <laughs> and then Randy's checking in. He says, oh, gosh, I thought you might bring it to church tomorrow. No, uh, no. I'll have to make more, maybe. Yeah, exactly. So we got plenty of them. So we'll see. Um, Jonathan Talks Hardware said sticky buns as well. Yes. So that's almost the same, right? Or they're Similar. different, but yes, same idea. The, the silicone mats are great for any of that stuff. We use it for pretty much everything. Um, we don't really use foil or wax anymore. I think the only thing I still use foil for is when we're doing bacon in the oven. Yeah, that can be really useful. Yeah. Um, there are a couple other products that we have not actually used yet. Let me see if I can find them that we did want to talk about. Did while you these spray are this last time? I did not spray this. Okay. Again, make sure whatever you're doing, you put it in with a lot of oil. Give me one sec, actually. I'm going to show a trick with this I just want to let these rise and set them aside. Okay, let me grab the wax paper. Okay. So this is a trick you can do. We don't have a silicone mat, again, for this one, small enough. Yeah. But this is actually going to be our show product coming up in just a second. It is, And it's on discount right now, which is great. If you're uh, eagle-eyed, you look in the carousel, you'll see it. But this is a air fryer and I need to make that maybe a little shorter this way. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of wax paper and that's just to prevent it. Parchment. Parchment paper. Uh, but I'm just going to cut that just so that it prevents it from sticking. But we can actually make the same cinnamon rolls here inside of this air fryer, which is coming up next as well. Okay, let me um, set that aside too. A couple other accessories that we have that I wanted to show you. I'm um, looking for a KitchenAid bowl. I guess this one's going to have to work. 
<laughs> so got too many kitchen aids going today. So there's the bowl and this is the six quart bowl cover. I'm going to bring this up on the Amazon just so you, you can this? take a look at it. Yeah. Um, actually, no, this is going to be the cover pack. So if you're going to oh. let things rise, this might be another cool option for you. I'm bringing this up as well. There's two different sizes. That's just the thing to be careful of. And I'll find out which one is which here in just a second. So we have the six quart machine and the five quart machine. Uh, it's a two pack here. And we're doing a quick unboxing of it. And what you're essentially getting is this inner bowl, which if you're mixing stuff and you need to get ingredients ready, this would be kind of cool to have that. And part of it is they, they needed to include a lid. So they said, why not just include another one? So this goes over the top of your KitchenAid bowl like this. And then it's dishwasher safe, by the way, but top rack only, it says. This one goes right here. So let's see if we can pull that up on the side real quick so they can yeah. see this better. These would be great like when you're making sugar cookies or molasses cookies and they need to chill. You won't have to transfer to a new bowl or use saran wrap, which is great. So there you go. Now that is the six quart, which I have in the cart. We also have another one. We have one for the five quart machine. So there we go. I got both of them on. Um, so there's two sets in here. So that's what you get with this pretty affordable. I'll have to pull up the price here. So that was the six quart, like I mentioned. And so this, uh, is the one they're $19. They're 20% off right now. And so this one's going to be for the five quart bowl, which I actually have to go grab because it's behind me. Oh, I will trade off with you. Also been used. <laughs> yep. So assume this had something that needed to rise or you were going to store something. I don't know, maybe some sort of jello that you had mixed. More yeah. like sugar cookie dough or molasses cookie dough. So definitely a lot smaller in size. Something that you have to chill. Yep. There we go. Now what's cool about this is this actually works on the machine as well, right? You can mm -hmm. actually put the tool in this yeah. and mix with it. Yeah, this would be great if you don't a lot of times when you add flour, it'll spray out. So this will prevent that. And then the next lid we have, um, we're excited to use with our kids because John is a hover parent. I have all my fingers, yeah. Yeah. just saying. He's always afraid when the kids are helping me that they're going to get their fingers in the mixer. And so he found this little gadget. This one I'm very exciting one? to use. Excited oh, to use. Yeah, I'm going to let you show it. One. I'm going to pull it up on the carousel. So this one it goes on the other bowl. Right? It goes on the other bowl because this one's the bigger one. You again have to get these for them, but this one is actually a shield. If you're working with kids that have a tendency to get into trouble or go, oh, that looks really yummy. Let me do that. It has to push down really hard though. So you push that down, you slide that under your um, implement, whatever that is, because you have to have it all closed before you use it. But now they have something that's very safe to pour into. I'm going to pull that up on the side so they can see that as well. You want to slide it that way a little bit? Which way? That way. This way. There we go for the GoPro. Actually, I need to raise the GoPro. I had it down so you guys can see. There we go. So that's what we're looking at, but that's how it fits. And if you have a KitchenAid mixer, you can put this around. These are all great accessories. If you know somebody that's got a KitchenAid, Take a look at it. If it's one of the tilt stands, they're usually five quart. You know, that's one set. If it's the Pro Bowl ones, they're usually six to eight quarts. And those are all, you know, the, the two different models. And if worst case scenario, you got the wrong one, you could return it and get the right one. So that's the two different ones that we have. Uh, Miller says, I need that. Yeah. <laughs> so, Good. yeah, definitely. If you're a KitchenAid fan, I was not a KitchenAid fan before, but now... I was saying the other day that I use it for pancake mix, like pre-made pancake mix. I'm super lazy. So if the KitchenAid is there, the bowl's ready, I pour the mix in, I get a cup of water and I'm dealing with the kids are going crazy and I just let it mix and I just add water until it's there. She would measure to the Not drop. The pancake mix. <laughs> that's the one type. But yeah, that's definitely a cool thing. So this is a guard or shield that you would put on there. Now, are we switching over? I yeah, I think look. you have to make nachos now. Oh, great. I thought I had it. I thought I had an out on this one. Um, I'll we, get your chips ready. Oh, I do have one product I get to show. One more product that we actually okay. used yesterday. Uh, actually, day before yesterday. Let me pull this up real quick. And this is for anybody that's ever tried to make a gravy. Now, I, yeah, most people get their gravy, I think, now in a can because it's just too hard to do it. Unless grandma's making it, then it's a lot easier, right? So uh, I'm going to pull this up here, but this is from OXO Good Grips, man. They make just about everything. Whatever they make seems to just be cool. 
We saw this one. Actually, technically, you did. I did. I um, begged for do it. We have it. It's around here yeah, somewhere. Right. Oh, there it is. Um, so I'll just show you real quick on this one. Well, um, our old one you had to pour from the top, and it was difficult to use and and get the the oil out. And that was the thing. Like if you're pouring from the top, you're always going to get. They had a little thing, but you're always going to a little bit of fat. Yeah. That's separated. And even just a tiny little bit of fat can throw off a recipe, right? Yeah. It's it's pretty cool. So I actually have some pictures of using this. Now we did not get a lot of drippings off our turkey this year. I don't know we what didn't. it was. We just had like a super dehydrated turkey, I think, when they, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. So this one you can actually see if we zoom in real quick here, you can actually see the layers that have separated. Now we also use this with a roast the other day. Yes. So we make a lot of Instapot roasts yeah. and with those, you're going to get that layer of fat once it's been in the freezer, fridge, whatever, for a while. Um, you don't want that, especially if you're going to do nachos or something cool, like a meat for your nachos. So you can separate that fat out. Some fat's good. Too much fat is not. Now, this is kind of cool. I was making a gravy. This is the claim to fame on this thing. This is why it is so cool. Not only can it strain out and separate the meats that are going in, but when you hit the button, it pours from the bottom. This is brilliant. I can't believe it took people how long to figure this out. I'm just going to check the Amazon chat. Um, so again, if you have not used from OXO Good Grips, this is a four quart, or is it four cup? Sorry, four cup gravy separator or, or uh, you know, fat separator. But you can use this for a variety of things. Any, anytime you have an emulsion or something that's going to, that's separated and you want to separate the parts to it, it's pretty cool. And you can actually, I don't know if I have the pictures of this one being used. There's our gravy. Oh my gosh, I had to show some pictures extra. So there's the gravy, how it turned out. It turned out great, but I was able to mix the pieces out just as needed, added a little bit of roux. I made the gravy from you scratch. Did. Yeah. And there's our daughter. I had to throw it in. She is the leg girl. She will go after the chicken leg. She thinks it's a really big chicken. So there you go. But that's from OXO Good Grips. Just wanted to show you guys that and what it looks like. So that was one of the last products here before I get to make nachos. Yep. So I'm going to remove this piece, I think, real quick. Did you? Yeah, okay. And we're going to talk about some of the cool products that we have. So these, I'm going to save these, but I'll show you a picture before I do. Give me one second. So we're going to make cinnamon rolls here, and you're going to get to see what those look like. But I actually took the clippings of these, and I just wanted to share them with you. And I used them in the air fryer, and I made cinnamon roll bites. And the kids love these. I, you pro they probably can't hear me while you're doing Sorry. <laughs> She's out there pouring nachos. This is literally how we make nachos uh, when we do it. Because, again, those Amazon Basics mats, they make the cleanup on this super easy. You can make the messiest nachos that you want. And there's no wasted aluminum foil, no parchment paper to deal with. Um, these are oven-safe silicone mats. The only thing I'd recommend, don't cut on them. You're going to leave some scratches, some scores in them if you do that. I'm going to see if we can put these in this bowl here to rise yep. since that one's done. I'll trade you spots and we're going to take that mat up as well, I think. There we go. So there's the, the nachos pre-treatment. Um, I've got a couple cool products that we're going to try out to see how we can make nachos. The first one is one I've shown you guys a while ago. Do you have the full star chopper? It's going to be right there. I'm going to pull this thing up, and this is so funny. This is like the number one chopper out there. I also got in trouble for purchasing this. Okay, so she she buys the cool tech and then for the kitchen, and then I steal it. She's got a, a label maker I'm about to show the other day, uh, which is pretty cool. So I just pulled this up in the, in the cart, and it's from Full Star. I'm actually going to go back to the Amazon cart real quick just because I want to share the right page with you guys. Here we go. So if you guys are just tuning in, if you go to that URL and you go down to the bottom, I'm just going to show you a bigger picture of this because it's hard to show this, you know, up close. But this chopper has the ability to make and dice different things. It's got different implements. There's the implements down there. Um, these are removable and washable. So you slide that over. Let me get the camera up here so they can see this. I just realized I'm probably not on the side camera. So let me do that on the side camera again. So these implements here come with it. You lock them down. That's fine there. Um, so you lock them down with this lock feature and then you can pull them out and wash them. Never touch this with your fingers like I'm doing because um, you could definitely hurt yourself. Do you have the bowl? I do. 
So we have a bowl of fresh ingredients that we're going to try and see if we can make this work in the chopper. So if you're making nachos, you got to have toppings. You do. So there's a couple different ways to do this. Um, if you like onion, and I'm going to see, these onions are right at the size that this is going to take. You want to cut them again? So, well, let's try one. Um, and one thing I'm going to say is this takes a lot more force than you would expect. So that was the one thing when I did it on my show the first time is I did not push hard enough. I was like, I was limping it and doing whatever. It does take more force, but just like that. Are you ready to see how it worked? <laughs> there we go. It is open now. And now we've got diced onion like that. So pretty slick, huh? Yep. I like that. So that was a whole half onion. Um, probably, I'm, don't. probably don't need a full onion with our kids. Let's take that away. Now you can do a whole tomato. I'm actually going to cut this in half just real quick. Just because I want to give myself a little bit of a chance. Now this will do a whole tomato, but the one thing I've noticed on this one specifically is that um, the skin of the tomato is not going to cut as well. So I'm going to do two sizes. I'm going to do it with a smaller one so you can see what that's like. So that went all the way through. Again, just have to push a little harder. Now, if you like your tomatoes fine like that, that's what you're going to get right there. So it worked pretty well. If you want your tomatoes a little bit thicker, take that off, switch it out. Got the new one in. That's how fast these things swap out. So ready to go. Bigger slices of tomato. So we're making a salsa, basically. So we got that. And now you're going to get the thicker, chunky stuff. So if you're going to cook that down, there you go. And that's what the bottom looks like. So it's just pushed all the way through. And actually, the skin's cut better on these ones. Um, I think it's because, again, you can't just, you know, put a little bit into it. You got to be yeah. all in. Well, and this, these are Roma tomatoes, so they're a little bit tougher. Those are pretty firm, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to switch back entire mushroom. Same thing. Now, whether or not your kids like mushrooms, you might be able to hide them in here. Um, so here's an issue right away. We've already got the mushroom didn't get all the way down. So you can use this to do that um, or just tap it out like that. I'm touching the bottom of it, not the sharp side. So again, mushrooms a little bit stringier. Uh, it got caught in there as well. So that's another thing. The last one I'm going to do is olives. Now it'd be kind of cool if they had the horizontal lines because our kids like the olives when they're circles. But let's see what this does. So we're going to get a pretty good topping. And I'm, I'm going to put more tomato because I like tomatoes. So. I'm going to do that here. So this is from Full Star. Just again, make sure you're committed when you push that down. There's no, and there you go. Look at that. That's so cool. Well, we're going to have nachos. Our kids got McDonald's, sadly, right before the show. We said, what would make them quiet? McDonald's that much. put them to a food coma for a little while. I'm going to do one more tomato on this. Let me know what you guys think about this. I'm, you know, kind of not. I'm going to put these in. Oh, actually, we're all ready to go. Okay. One second. Otherwise, they won't be done. So I just want to show. So there's the, was that the first batch of cinnamon rolls? Yeah. So they've been resting about 25 minutes or more already, right? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Just about. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. We're doing live show. So you're throwing those in the oven. And this is not like a real cooking show where, let me show you what one I made earlier. Yeah. Earlier, the kids were driving us nuts, pulling your hair, that kind of stuff. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put uh, two tomatoes and we're just going to go whole one. I'm telling you, prep time, that was pretty fast, right? I'm going to do, this is the one I wanted. Now, mushrooms are a little bit long. You might want to bisect them or do them a little bit differently when you're going to do those. But there we go. So now I'm ready for my nachos, except I'm missing the most important ingredient in Mexican cooking. Well, in nachos. <laughs> <laughs> Mexican cooking, cheese. Well, that and masa. I think masa, you'd have a strong case to be made for masa being important. I'm going to put that over here for now. Um, so we're going to need to make some shredded cheese, but we've got another product for that. So you can buy block cheese. Obviously, you can buy shredded almost for the same price sometimes. But uh, we were looking for another way to make sliced cheese. Um, and there is one from KitchenAid. I'm going to pull it up here in just a second. We're going to do a quick live unbox. So this is what you get, and this is from KitchenAid, and this is their shredder. It's a, basically a slicer shredder. Now, I didn't like this one as much for chopping. That's why we literally yeah. pulled the full star out. We're like, this thing does a much better job 
of chopping. Yeah. Now you, you can. We did an onion, and we did peppers. Yep. Yep. I can't remember. I um, know we did an onion. You, if you use the slicing attachment, you can do carrots. You mm -hmm. can do sliced cucumbers. Our kids love cucumbers. We just didn't have the right foods for it. I think it was what was going on. Let me unbox it real fast here. Lisa C checks in and she says, yummy. And Don, you followed. Thank you so much for following us here. Um, this is John and CJ. If you're just tuning in, we're doing cinnamon rolls and nachos today. I don't know if those go together. Which I don't... KitchenAid are you going to attach it to? I'm going to attach it to that guy in just a second. Give me one okay. second. So I'm just going to unbox and show you what you get. Again, the neat thing about the KitchenAid attachments is the motor and all the expensive goodies you've already bought. Yeah. So you're not buying a dedicated shredder. And, and when you have a kitchen with not a ton of room, that's not a bad deal. Be super careful. Don't stick your hand in that thing ever if you can help it. Um, now, to put it in and out, just literally pull down here and you put the item in and push. So that one goes in. Now, different sizes. There are the one I have in the carousel is the three blade. There is a four blade that has another size of blade. But what we found is the cheese actually did better on the smaller mm -hmm. one. So I'm going to save the smaller blade. Now, if you're doing smaller carrots, you can use the center hole there to push down. And if you're doing larger items like cheese, you can do that. My wife nearly dropped this in there trying to push something. I was like, oh, this is going to be bad because. If you did that, the smaller one can go in and get itself chopped up, which we don't want. So we'll also say you have to push down on this tamper a little bit harder than I thought you would need to. Yeah. So that's another one of those. Or than a traditional food processor, perhaps. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm going to take the slicing blade out and I'm going to put the blade I want. Again, be super careful carrying these blades, guys. Um, and we'll go through this. Now, I'll do it live, but we also have some B-roll. I'll give you this here. Thanks. And I'm going to bring the KitchenAid over. Now, if you've never used the KitchenAid attachments, they're not that hard to attach. All of the KitchenAids that you see with this front attachment are essentially compatible. So you're going to be able to take that whatever accessory that you have. Now, again, this cord keeper worked pretty well. Yeah. So I can take out just what the cord I need, put it over here. I'm going to make sure it's off. Now, technically, when you're doing attachments or plugging implements in, where did I just put that down? On the other side here. Here we go. When you're doing that kind of stuff, make sure it's unplugged. So I should follow my own safety directions. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to unplug it. Now, I'm going to come on the right camera just because I want to show you how we put this together. Oh, awesome. Thank you. So the way that this works is it's going to have about a half inch mount. Now, I just turned. You see how I kind of turned it? You just want to engage it. And what's neat here is there's going to be a pin that it locks in when you know it's deep enough. And then just tighten this down. Once it's tight, it's not going to go any further. This is going to be really firm. That's what you want because we are making cheese with this. Shredding cheese. Shredding. Yeah, we're not making cheese. <laughs> um, they have cool stuff. They've got an ice cream maker add-on. They've got one we haven't tried yet, which is a sausage maker, the meat grinder. Yep. We've been buying a ton of these. Now, I just made sure that this was pushed in all the way. It wasn't. So just make sure that's indexed and pushed in all the way. Let's try not to lose a finger, right? Yep. Okay, here we go. I'm going to let them see the front view of this as well. It'll tell you in the manual for, for this to run it at speed 10, just to let okay. you know. On the, on yes. the slicer. So um, if you went too slow, it's going to just kind of mash things, right? So yeah. they want that speed. So all of the attachments in their manuals have a different speed that you have to run it at. Even the... Um, like the dough hook can only go at speed two at the highest. So you just want to make sure you know. Okay, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. Everybody's looking in my ear. <laughs> so now we're going to run this at speed 10. So already it's working. You can see that the KitchenAid motor is geared. Are we ready for this? Okay, now this is indexed also, so it's not going to bounce around. Okay. Here we go. If you just put it down, it'll... Oh, it's flinging all over. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is a two-person job, by the way. We had it down before. I had a deeper bowl, I think. Yeah. Now, don't, whatever you do, stick your finger in there thinking it's done. But we're making tons of cheese. That's not that... That doesn't take very long. Okay. Hopefully you guys can still hear us. Hopefully it's not all drowned out by the machine. So this is from KitchenAid. So this is from KitchenAid. This is their slicer shredder. 
Now, because it's off, she's sticking her fingers where it says don't stick your fingers. But other people would just push this button. That's just a suggestion, right? A serving suggestion. Now, what's interesting is this thing is jammed up in there pretty good. And let me show you why. So this was one thing we noticed. Again, full disclosure here, KitchenAid ain't paying us. I just happen to like their stuff and like to buy it all. Um, but as I pull this out, what you're going to notice is a lot of that cheese does get caught in the outside. Now, we actually ran this again, right? So we, we took these off, we blocked them up, and we ran it again, and that was fine. We won't do that today, just in the interest of time. But you can definitely clean this out. And we've made an absolute metric ton of cheese there. So we made a ton of cheese shredded. So if you were buying in bulk, which is never a we bad do. thing, yep. you, know, um, you could make, that's a pretty much a bag full of cheese right there. And we actually made some earlier, just prepped it and we have it in the fridge and we're ready to go. So I'm gonna go back out to the main camera. I'm gonna get my nachos ready. Um, your cinnamon rolls got some time left, don't they? Yes, they do. Okay, so we're gonna talk about a couple more attachments. I'm gonna go ahead and put this yep. in the fridge and we're gonna start prepping these nachos. Now the question is, are you a family that does the cheese first or ingredients first, right? So let me know in the chat, you guys that are just checking in here, let me know if you're in ingredients first, like your toppings or cheese first. I've seen it done both ways. I'm just checking in here on the Amazon. Got quite a few people checking in. And let's take a look at the chat here. Anybody have any questions? Okay. Could you use it for pancake mix? Pancake mix on the KitchenAid? Yes. I think so. That's definitely a use case. Let me put this out of the way. Um, that other one, the KitchenAid shredder, I should tell you about that. It does say not to submerse it as well. Now you can clean all of the blades separately, but you have to hand clean because it's got motors and gears and grease. They don't want that high temperature in there as or well. Or the actual unit that attaches the body. to the, yep. yeah. So they say definitely don't dishwasher that. It's $44.99 right now. So again, you got to be committed to slicing stuff. What's funny about it is this is... What I will say is that... I have been buying block cheese because they put filler in the pre-shredded. So I've been buying block cheese and he's been complaining a lot because he, he was having to hand grind it um, or <laughs> shred it. I'm I lazy. Say. Yeah. Is what she's trying to say. So yeah. um, I wanted a food processor and this was our compromise because food processors, again, we didn't want to use counter space or cabinet space for another big appliance that we were only going to use maybe once or twice a week, if that. Yep. So this is just an attachment that we already have the KitchenAid. So I think what we're gonna have to do in our next kitchen is make a KitchenAid drawer for all the accessories. I've seen people that have the lift out thing for their sand mixers. Yeah. They've got a KitchenAid cabinet now. So that's how important these eyes are. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of both. I'm gonna do half and half. So I'm gonna mix up the onion pretty well here, just cause I don't want the kids to see it. I'm gonna just do a little bit of a dressing here. You want to hit one on that one? There we go. She's running the cameras for us now. Look, I'm techie all of a sudden. There we go. So I'm going to do this. There you go. So now a couple tricks too. If you have not pre-cooked your ingredients, some people like them fresh. Some people like them fajita style. Um, one of the things that you can do is, and my parents taught me this, you can throw this in and warm it up and pre-cook all of your veggies first. But I'm actually going to then cheese this some. Yeah, those tight curls of cheese, that's going to be really cool because that's going to make it really even. If you had the bigger shreds of cheese, I think it's not going to be that way. And you could mix this cheese. You could try several different kinds of cheese. What CJ said about uh, fillers, uh, there was the, the common joke at our table when we had the Parmesan cheese, the green one, is like, pass me the sawdust, right? And nobody believed me on the sawdust comment. So I said, pass me the sawdust to Jacob, uh, who, by the way, I got him to quit licking the, the Parmesan off the top. So then he would lick his finger and do it instead. But you know, now, now he's moved out, but <laughs> funny story there. Um, so yeah, we look at the back. If you go grab your green Parmesan cheese, it's going to be wood fibers basically and wood cellulose, cellulose fibers. That's sawdust. They're basically putting sawdust in your cheese. So I did that real quick here and now I'm gonna do a little bit more on top and then I'm gonna put more cheese on it. So we're kind of making a sandwich of all of our stuff. Leave some for the air fryer. Oh, oh yeah, I didn't think about that. Well. There we go. We got plenty there. So um, we've got a cinnamon roll in the air fryer. That only takes about eight minutes when it goes. Let's do a little bit of cleanup here. That's the one thing I didn't have prepped is I didn't have a lot of cleanup regs. So maybe that's that's for next time. We'll remember to do that. 
So we did talk about that. I do want to talk about the air fryer next. Do you think that thing's ready to cook? Yeah. Well, I just, it's fine. Yeah. There we go. We're going to throw the nachos in. So this is an air fryer that's up next, and this is from the Simdraw company. And if you've never used an air fryer, this one is very unique, I'll have to say, compared to a lot of the air fryers. I have shown air fryers on my show before. Um, where is the basket for I it? I was letting it rise over Oh, she's, she's rising it up over there. But I'll show you just because I need to throw the basket in. How close is it? might not it? be quite. Not it'll, quite. It'll be fine, I think. Okay, so it's either that or we got to throw the nachos in first. The nachos will go fast. So okay. Those are probably a four-minute nacho. Um, so here's a trick here. Again, we were just doing these. You want me to I'm, take those out then? Yeah, give me one second. I'm just going to show them real fast. So you can do cinnamon rolls. I've done cinnamon rolls, and we'll show that uh, before the end. But when you put this in, one of the nice things about this unit specifically versus several others, super easy to use. If you're the one that, like, you know, burns water, isn't that the joke? Um, this one's going to have French fries, turkey legs, fish, shrimp, steak, it's got all of the different icons and you just have to go over to the one you want, right? So you can go up and down, you can change them. There's a temperature and a time in there. So if I was gonna do cinnamon rolls, it's gonna be 360 on these, 356. Time is gonna be eight minutes, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm actually gonna do the nachos, I think, in this, take a little bit of extra. Yeah, because those just look cool. And then I can show you the one really cool claim to fame about this one over all of the air fryers. Now, with six of us, the air fryer usually is an accompaniment to whatever we're having, right? I'm going to be making something with it, like French fries. I've got some sweet potato fries. I'll show you some pictures of here in just a second as well. Um, so that's one of the aspects of this. But let's go ahead and do you want to grab me a parchment? Yes. Cut up and we're going to make some nachos on parchment in here. So we can reuse it. <laughs> so... So These actually can. clean, wash really easy. I should show that, yeah. This comes out and it it does clean very easy, but because we're trying to make two things, back to back, we will use parchment. You can just rip it to whatever size you want, yep. Or she's going to do the cutter. Yeah, like I said, she's the measurer, I'm the... <laughs> he also doesn't clean as he goes. Okay, that was the other thing. So do you have a nickname for your spouse in the kitchen? Because I have affectionately called her the ninja in the kitchen. Because when she's in the kitchen and cooking, you don't know anybody's been there, right? You know, she gets done and there's food and like the kitchen is exactly the way we left it. And it's like, how did that happen? What is, what's my nickname? The tornado. Because <laughs> <laughs> you come back and all your stuff's thrown around everywhere. You didn't plan on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's get some nacho implements. I'm going to go ahead and put the chips out here. You want to hit two for us again? Oh, sorry. One again for us. We're going to go camera one here. Um, quick, simple to make nacho in the air fryer. Now we take an air fryer. We got a couple of these. We take them with us camping because the oven in our RV sucks. Yes. Uh, we got our new RV. All ovens in RVs suck. Yeah, pretty much that's the, the going thing. And so if you want and you have power in your RV or if you want to run these on a generator, you know, I don't know the exact wattage of this one, but you can generally run these on a generator pretty easily. This one's going to go on and off automatically. So I'm just making my stuff. This is going to have to be clean for sure in between. But um, do you want to hand me the ingredients and some cheese? We'll get going on this. So same kind of thing. I'm just trying to make a layer here and then I'll throw some cheese on there. And this is going to be so cool. I, you know, I didn't even think to make nachos the first thing I made in these, but it's going to be the perfect one for the feature that I haven't shown you yet on this one. You guys that are smart in the uh, carousel have already like skipped ahead. You probably already seen what this thing does that most other air fryers that I've seen don't do. So that should be about enough. I'm going to throw a little bit more cheese because it always looks cool bubbling. I'm going to make sure I have the right product up in the cart real quick. This is um, from Simdraw. And now this one's on sale. So a good air fryer is going to be over $100 usually. This one is 42% off right now. It starts at $120. Now it's going straight into the air fryer. Now I'm going to do $400 for about five minutes, but I'm going to eyeball it. So um, there's $392. So that's their $400. And I'm going to go down here for about five minutes. Sorry, I didn't want to make it so you guys can actually see it. That would be helpful, huh? So let's go down. Let's go this way. 
Now the removable basket's gonna be nice on this one, but check this out, are you guys ready for this? It's got a window, it's like a real oven. So it's, now I can't show you the element without tricking it, and I'm for the final review video, I am gonna trick it so I can show you how the elements work in it. But it's got an element that's lighting up, just like your oven does, an electric oven. And it's actually gonna be cooking my nachos. I'm trying to get close so you can see it here. But literally, you can see your food. So you don't have to keep pulling it out to go, is it done yet? Is it done yet? And this thing gets hot enough at 400 degrees. It's a, basically a convection oven too. It's spinning around your food. Um, at 400 degrees with that convection cooking, you're gonna get the browning, you're gonna get all the really cool stuff. So we're gonna let that run for a little bit. Couple safety things on this while it's running here, I should tell you. So this back here gets really hot. You see the light that you can see? That's the element running back there. It gets really hot. I don't want you guys to burn your counters. Uh, some people have actually burned. So if you have it under counter, pull it back. Even if you got tile, pull it back away from the counter. Um, that's one safety thing. It also has a blower up here for airflow. So make sure that this is free. Don't put anything on it and try to run it. And it does have some pretty cool little mini measurements up top here. So if you aren't sure about how long things should take and you want a starting point, that tells you for everything right there. But um, French fries are another one that we can show here. I actually have those pulled up. I'll trade you sides if you want. <laughs> and I'll go back here in the carousel to the air fryer. So this was the other day and I actually made these in this. This was the first thing I made in it was actually a sweet potato fry recipe that I do. And so there's the fries cut up. Now you don't wanna overload these air fryers. So they don't have a ton of room. This one's 5.3 quarts. So there's smaller ones, there's a lot larger ones. This one's kind of a medium size, I would say. I think we've only had this size, right? Yeah, yep, on that. Um, there are places, and we're not allowed to mention, that sell larger ones, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you can get larger ones. Take a look at that. So I do, um, you know, even just Red Robin seasoning. You can throw some Red Robin seasoning, definitely put some oil on it, but you're not gonna be deep frying the fry. So you get a lot better, it's healthier for you. So there we go. And there's my daughter. She was very enthralled with this. Well, can you use pancake mix in the OXO grip? We haven't tried it. Oh, you know, that would be a great but idea. But you probably could if, if the batter was thin enough, thin enough. I you would gotta say make yes. it thin, but that's a great idea. Yeah. Now, now you're giving us an idea to try out. Thank you so much. Who was that that asked that? Was that Don? Yes. Don asked that. And Randy, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate that. If you guys are just tuning in, this is John the Net Guy with my wife, CJ. We're taking a look at an air fryer on our kitchen tech show. we got cinnamon rolls cooking. we got nachos cooking. We're not going to burn anything, right? Hopefully. Okay. Uh, how's my nachos looking? Are they burning? Speaking of that. Oh, wow. They're getting yeah. brown. They're bubbling. Okay, so we're getting close. Um, but yeah, this is what it looks like. So do them in small batches. Build them in like a cross pattern. And we made some burgers on the broiler as well. So that's the thing is you can cook burgers in these. You yeah, can do that. Yeah, we've done burgers before. If you had a couple, two or three of these, you could do them pretty easily, right? Yes. All at once. But that's the thing with our family. So Might want to pull those they're bubbling. <laughs> so I'm going to trade with her. We're going to go back here and I'm going to go to the side camera and I'm going to see if I can show you that bubbling action. So again, we don't have to open it. Yeah, the color on the camera isn't doing it justice that they're browning. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I'm gonna give them a little bit more because at the end of the chips are browning, but you can see the bubbling action hopefully taking place in there. That's pretty slick. Yep, there we go. I just realized we have like nowhere to put it. <laughs> <laughs> see, this is, this is our first cooking show live here, if you can tell. And uh, football EJJ says, I need it. Absolutely, <laughs> my friend. This is a pretty cool product. Um, Definitely excited when they said, hey, we got this air fryer. And I took a look at it and I was like, a window? How long did it take us to think of that, right? Very cool. And again, safety first. Don't put this up against something, even though it fits under your counter out of the way, which is nice. Uh, condos and apartments. You, know, yes. you don't want to heat the whole thing up in the summer. Put this in the corner there. You can totally do nachos and quick meals. And we're doing a five-minute nacho here. This is going to look so cool. I might do six. I like my nachos on the top, just like that extra crispy. I'm looking at it and this is cool. Normally I would have this thing pulled out three or four times by now. I'm just mm -hmm. trying to get it perfect, but I can leave it in there. Now it will cycle on and off. That's one of the things how it does its temperature on this. So it's going to get it up to temp. It's going to shut off. So it doesn't overheat it. That's if you're doing like 300 or less. And then it's going to cycle on and it's going to cycle off. So you'll see that do that. And that does turn the light off, which a little bit of a drawback, but 
most of the time, you know, when the light kicks on, I take a look down there, and there we go. That was a five-minute nacho. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Can you hit one for us? Okay. There they are. Now, getting those out might be a little bit of a chore safely. This is hot, and actually, yeah. I should be real careful on our counters. That's one thing I should tell you. The bottom of these always does get very, very hot. So if you do have something to put it on, that's not bad. Um, could do a silicone mat. I'm actually just going to do one of these. Okay. I meant to put it on. Uh, oh, you know, I was going to put it under this. Sorry for one second. So you can yeah. do just that, you know, use a, an oven mitt or something to rest it. But yeah, pretty cool. And we can let those cool off a little bit. I'm going to pull up the Amazon page for this just because I want you guys to be able to see that here. We're going to go back out. We were just looking at the vegetable chopper. That's what we use to get everything cut toppings. down all to the size so let me pull this up and we were just taking a look where is it there it is some draw there we go 11 ratings this is a fairly new product a lot of times i get new products that come out they send them out to me first so you're probably going to see a review of it on amazon here pretty soon but there's the pricing cyber monday deal exclusive 50 dollars and 20 cents off probably the most discounted product mm -hmm. today uh, and there's a chicken they can do an entire chicken smaller one in there um, there's the different settings that you can see here so steak fish eggs french fries are really popular i showed you how to do those shrimps and other things like seafood you don't want to overcook it you don't want to undercook it sauteing it i tend to overcook but this is air frying so again you're not as much oil um, when you air fry though i would recommend put more oil on the product than you think you're going to need like your french fries if you don't put any oil on the seasoning they can come out dry um, but if you put good oils, right, avocado oil, things like that, then it works out pretty well. So we made it through the air fryer. The nachos were cooking. Everything looks pretty good. There's a couple products still left. Yep. And you want to do um, the cinnamon bites or rolls in that? Um, you know, we can do that after the show. I'm actually going to move this out of our way. Okay. Just over Did here. Did you want to show the KitchenAid? This guy okay. I was going to show yes. next. So um, if you're doing any sort of mixing in the kitchen, and we did this with mashed potatoes. We did. So we made our mashed potatoes in the kitchen. And I'm going to show you the difference of using the standard traditional KitchenAid beater versus using this one that has silicone edges. Now, I want to show you the edges on the side of this really quick, too. Let me pull this up and out of the way. We're getting our nachos to cool. I'm like super hungry, so I'm looking at those nachos. This is that. Um, this is your traditional one, and this is the silicone edged one. Now, be really careful. Follow the directions on this. I saw an Amazon review from somebody who clearly didn't know or follow the instructions. When you run this thing, if you run it with nothing in the bowl, it's going to chatter around and make noise because it's lubricated by your food. You know, you don't have to have any oil on it, but it's lubricated by your food, but it's going to squeegee the edges of your bowl as it mixes around. So if you don't have anything to lubricate it, it's going to just chatter around and look like it's broken. So it's not. But that's the item there real quick. I'll hand you that. I just happen to have some more pictures here that I'm going to pull up of making mashed potatoes. So let me pull this up for you guys so you can see it. My wife's like, all he does is show videos on his show. This is really easy. So there is how we made our mashed potatoes. This is with the traditional. And I'm going to show you where the problem lies when you're using something like this. I love this. She's doing all the cooking and I'm just, you know, getting to chat. Um, so when you're trying to make these traditional mashed potatoes, they're sticking on the sides there. So you can definitely see that they're getting stuck. They're not cleaning that area and the sour cream's not mixing in, you know, so you're kind of stuck there. So let me show you the better way. If we use this one and I swapped it out, I'm gonna see if this is the, the installation was a little bit tricky to get right, but watch this difference that this makes now. So now as this thing's going around, you can see it's wiping the edge completely clean. Mm -hmm. It's making a very good mix. So if you're making pancake mix, like I was saying in the mornings for the kids, you know, I tend to have to like turn it way up and over mix my pancake mix, which again can make them tough. Um, with this, it's going to actually scour the edge there. This would be great with cookie batter. Yep. And it yeah. works with the traditional bowl and the Cake bowl sizes. Batter. So, yeah. Oh, you know what? I got to make sure I pull that up on the Amazon chat. Here we go. And Blake, thank you so much. My enter the giveaway if it's not too late. You may enter the giveaway. And let me make sure that I have you guys the giveaway information. And then we're going to do the drawing here. We're doing a giveaway for this lamp right here, guys. So this is that RGB lamp. 
that I was talking about. I'm thinking of flipping those nachos over and digging. <laughs> definitely getting hungry. The hubby's going to have to take me to dinner. Okay. Um, we got the nachos out of there. Oh, you know what? It just popped out. That was perfect. I'm going to trade you sides. Uh-oh. Are you, you burning there? Do you need this? Well, we need some hot pads, Skip. Okay. Not my phone. My phone is not a hot pad. Okay, so let's show them that one. <laughs> you okay? Yes. There we go. And there is the lamp. I'm going to pull this other one off so you're not doubled up here. And then we're going to go to the side camera. Okay, so who did it better? <laughs> those have been in a lot longer too, right? Yes. You put those in way before I had my nachos in. This is not, again, this is like personal size nachos. And they're actually, I think, done better. They're or done crispier. I like mine crispy. The veggies are done well. That was in at 350. I'm trying to like compare it, it over. Yeah. <laughs> Those were done at 350. These were done at about 400. And this one, I don't know. Are we allowed to eat on Amazon? I'm, <laughs> I'm going to do it anyway. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. So, number one, I'm going to do a cheese shot here. There we go. Nice stringy cheese. And we just cut that cheese. Shredded. Oh, okay, fun. Mm. Yeah, don't cut the cheese. No cutting cheese on <laughs> That's against the Amazon rules. Very good. So that was the Simdroll air fryer. You're pulling out which now? I'm going to pull out the cinnamon rolls in a minute. Okay. Um, you already showed this guy? I did show that we talked about the grain mill from KitchenAid. Okay. I am going to bring up the edge beater just so that it's up here on the carousel so people can see that. We did show how it works. It's it's a $21 attachment, and it's not on any sort of sale right now. But honestly, if you're going to invest $500 in a machine, wouldn't you want it to do the best job it can, right? So give it give it a $20 attachment, and now you've got two. If one's dirty, you can use the other. Oh, my goodness. You want me to make some room? Okay. How hot is it? Does it look good? It does look done. Let me see. I'm going to do some of these. Well, go for it. We'll just share the whole space over here. You want to hit one for them so I can tease them with these? <laughs> so we promised you nachos and cinnamon rolls. I think we've uh, accomplished that. Let's take a look at the chat real quick. Uh, Pinky Text checked in, says, those look good. I'm, I'm absolutely sure of that. Um, just checking. I don't know if Blake's followed already, but Blake, that is awesome. Um, <laughs> is he tall or is she short? Both. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I like that answer. Um, I entered Blake says that's awesome. Do I need to be on the stream and here to claim? Um, Steven, he's standing close and she's standing away. That's what it is. So if I do this and you stand back, it's even worse. Oh yeah. See now I, we're about I, the same, right? <laughs> I am short though. Yes. <laughs> oh, so they can't see it. Cause I was on the wrong camera. My bad. Let's do that again. Okay, so if you're forward and I'm back, we're about. And then yeah. if I'm forward and you're back, yeah. I, oh my I gosh, you short. look like a munchkin in that. So we did make cinnamon rolls and nachos. You might want to show them this. Okay. Um. Ooh, buddy. Again, we oh, have you one of this. One for me. Sorry. Tag we team. have the uh, silicone mat under the cinnamon rolls, and why that's important. Do you have? I have the footage of cleaning. He can this. show you the footage of cleaning up from a couple days ago when we made cinnamon rolls, and it is super easy. Mainly hot water took it off. Um, Not too much scrubbing. Yeah, hardly. Randy's any actually... checking in and says those look good. And Blake, thank you so much for pasting the uh, the entry URL. I'm going to have to shut down the entries in just a little bit. I had a problem one time before where people were still entering the drawing when you were doing when it? I had to pull oh. the file and then they get mad because they were like, didn't finish it all the yeah. way. So we're going to have so that go drawing enter right now, right now, while we talk about one more product and then we're going to do the drawing. So I'm going to put the drawing URL up for just a few more seconds here. So if you're seeing just for the first time, there's that cinnamon rolls look good. Nachos are a uh, trailery. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but you could make those nachos in a trailer if you had an air fryer, right? I actually like nachos. <laughs> I think those are great. <laughs> so I'm going to have more of them. Okay. We do have one more product, which is an accessory for the KitchenAid. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to install oh, it. Oh, the pasta? The pasta maker. Oh, mm. man, those nachos are good. So you want to talk about yummy treats. So this one is from Antry. I got to pull it up. I keep putting my phone away and that's how I pull up items on the carousel for you guys. So I'm sorry. I bought this a while ago. We don't have time on the show today to use it. We've got a couple other really cool products. If you enjoyed the show, 
do me and CJ a big favor, hit that follow button. If you're on any of the other services, go ahead and join um, the link at the bottom and join on the Amazon if you can to do the follow. Because we'll show you more of these kind of cool toys and tools and I'll talk her into more of these, I promise. Um, but this one is from Antree and I just pulled it up in the carousel and it's a pasta maker. Now it's a three in one, it says, which you can actually use this to just make dough. If you need really thin sheets of dough, do you want to hit one for me? I'm going to show you the overview of it real quick here. So as a pasta maker, it's going to do that basic hand crank stuff that you normally do, but it's going to do it automatic. So if you're not into that, and especially if you want to do multiple passes through what you end up having to do, this is going to allow you to thin out your dough with the center. It's going to allow you to cut your fettuccine noodles with this side, and it's going to let you cut your pasta noodles with this side. Like so, spaghetti size? Yeah, spaghetti noodles. So when I, when I say pasta, I mean spaghetti. I, I should totally be better at this. But a um, couple quick things, and I'm looking to see if I can get this to pop off. So push in, it looks like, and lift up. That's how you clean it. Oh, and there's a piece in there that came through. Well, let's put that out. <laughs> so that's what they're talking about. Do not immerse in water. Again, another one of these products that they don't want you to immerse in water. They'd rather have it dry out and you knock out whatever dry pieces are later, just because if you get some stuff in there and it gets wet, good luck. You're not going to be able to get the moldiness out of it. So that is from Antree. I have some really cool pictures I want to show of yes. that. So I'm going to leave this over here. Now we don't have time to make the topping for this live. You mean the pasta? The the powdered sugar for the oh, cinnamon rolls. But you yes. want to tell them about that a little bit? Well, there's a few different ways you can dress up your cinnamon rolls. You can make a cream cheese frosting, you know, like a traditional cream cheese icing. Or um, last time we made them, we just did a little powdered sugar with um, milk and whisked it together and then kind of more of a glaze, which I don't know which one I'm going to do today. Maybe vote down below which one you guys think I should do after the show, but definitely let them cool a little bit. Um, we've done it too early before and then it just like all slides off. So you want to let them cool so we won't have time to do it on air, but. Oh my gosh, got the nicest comments. Uh, Karen Ann's been with us the whole time, by the way. Karen Ann, thank you so much for thank tuning you. in so long. She really wants to win this lamp. So hopefully she's already signed up. Yeah. Worth being said a second time, John, you and CJ are awesome. CJ, you definitely have an Amazon future. <laughs> Love seeing you and show off your fancy cooking products. And thank you for telling us all the pros and cons. That's the other thing is I don't think enough people tell you what doesn't work right. Yeah. You know, so I like to bring that up. Okay. I was going to go back over here and I promised to show you some cool pictures of the pasta maker. If you have not had fresh pasta one, you're missing out. <laughs> She's already, you can't look at the pictures yet. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I was down with the Rona when this happened. <laughs> so this, this was, was a, like three months ago. This is about three months ago. Yeah. The yeah, uh, mom was sequestered. And can so... you tell our little one didn't have her hair brushed? Oh, she's going to pick on me <laughs> on that. I haven't pulled the picture up, but okay. I can pull the picture up. They're now. still cute. It's fine. So again, KitchenAid mixer works really well to mix your mm -hmm. uh, pasta, but then you can throw it through. Now the way you do this there, she's getting the little hands dirty on the hand mixing there. But the way you throw it through several times, make sure you use plenty of flour to, you know, keep it nice and, um, you know, not tacky through there. And this is going to get super long. So you're going to get like some juggling going on. And she's like, what? <laughs> it took us a while to get this. Now we do have a video of it. So the machine you can see is spinning. That's the fettuccine size noodles. It was very good. It was very, very good. If you, yeah. yeah, once you have it, it's like boiled chicken versus barbecue chicken. Like the, when you reheat or sorry, rehydrate noodles versus they come out like this. And yes, you do let them dry out. Um, you want them to dry out a little bit, but when you cook them, it's just amazing. So there's, there's what it looks like. That's quite the picture I took there. <laughs> or maybe I should edit these. Um, did I make shrimp? Well, no, that's chicken with these. So I did, I, I sauteed some chicken. So this is a fettuccine Alfredo from scratch with broccoli. Look at that. Of course, I didn't focus on that. Um, there are other things you can do with a grain mill, right, babe? Oh. So <laughs> those are my first two loaves. Uh, <laughs> we found out it rose a little bit too much and hit the top of our small oven. Yeah. So yeah. The, the upper oven is not it's full size. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that definitely works. I'm, I'm eating the nachos. Sorry, I'm hungry. Mm. Those look better than the cinnamon rolls I buy from Boston Butterfly. Thank you so much. Thank you. That is great. And Blake is sending Lucky Hearts butter and 
fries. They're like, those are all the best <laughs> things. I don't know what yeah. that means. But so you have to do the drawing now? I do have to do the drawing. Let me pull this back out. I will log into the super secret URL here and download the list. So while I'm doing that, do you want to give them a quick recap of some of the stuff that we showed? What was your favorite item of all the stuff we showed? <sighs> um, I do love shredding our cheese because we do buy block cheese or when I go shopping, I buy mm -hmm. block cheese. And so it's easy for me so that he'll still use it to shred a bunch of cheese at one time um, with the new attachment for the KitchenAid. So I can do that, put it in baggies, and then he can use it too. Or the kids, the kids will not get the hand grater out and do it. They're lazy. What? Too. You're saying they're related to me? Yeah. Um, I love my grain mill and I love the bread we've been making and the rolls. Our kids all love the rolls. Um, before we had the grain mill, if we bought wheat bread, they all complained. Now they're eating whole grain wheat bread um, and they love it and are asking for more, even the cinnamon rolls and, and regular rolls that we've made and bread. Um, so I love that. I love the KitchenAid, the new big one, because it can mix all my stuff for me. Yep. I'm trying to you think what else. Right. We, of course, love the silicone mats, and they're probably one of the most affordable items. Um, we use them for everything. So we hardly ever use the throwaway products anymore, like foil and wax paper and parchment. Um, usually, only if we're going somewhere and we don't want to forget them, we might use them. Or mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. I would say with bacon, we'll still use foil, but everything else we use the silicone mats. So I love those. That would be good. Yeah. Um, I did get the entries. Good. One of the beautiful things about entering a giveaway on a tiny channel is the odds are forever in your favor. Like, For sure. I wish I could give away half a dozen of these because that's about how many entries we have. So it's going to be really sad for some people, happy for some others. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get these going in our prize wheel and do that. But absolutely what you said. There were yeah. some other comments in here. Um, Claudine's Music said, absolutely love my mock mill Lino grain mill. I haven't heard of one of those. I haven't so. used that one, but we love our grain mill. I like both of them. The KitchenAid is great. Like I said, if you already have a KitchenAid, I would definitely um, start at least with the KitchenAid attachment. And we didn't expect that though, right? Like no. we, we didn't think that a metal, because that one does have metal. Um, it grain, does, right? but which is fine. It, and it, it's just a little bit slower and um, than my stone mill. <laughs> Somebody says one in six, quick, close the form. I know. <laughs> it is closed. It is closed. We already did that. Thank you so much. And Claudine says just silicone. Okay. Yeah. Um, she was talking about the silicone mat. What is the silicone made of? It isn't plastic. No, it's not. It's just silicone. These are all pure silicone. They're yeah. good to over 500 degrees. I don't believe there's any plastic in them. Check the Amazon to be sure. Um, be, I know, you know, Silpat makes them. Um, there's several different versions. Yes, I'm we, glad. we use them all the time. And I did you already show the picture? I did show the picture a little bit earlier of that. Um, yes, of the we the cleanup is just so much easier. And it is nice to be more sustainable and not have to throw everything away. So I'm going to pull up Edge here and I'm going to have to go to Spinner. <laughs> My burnt bread. <laughs> <laughs> no, they can't see that yet. I was giving you a pass oh. on that. Here we go. So I'm going to edit the form here. I'm pasting our entries. I'm going to do the design. Hold on one second. Design this. Well, oh, there's a theme setting. They've changed this already. Okay, full screen. Here we go. I'm going to start sharing our prize wheel. Now, I want to thank you guys again. If you haven't already, do a quick favor for me. Hit the follow. Tell a friend about it. You know, you can send this link to anybody else. It's not super private. And this show is going to keep replaying over and over ad nauseum. So you're going to be like internet famous oh, great. for a good reason. Uh, so there go. <laughs> I'm going to hit the button. And if you don't win again, sorry, you didn't win. Uh, he but does giveaways a lot. I do giveaways a lot. We're doing it almost every show this week. I'm going to hit the button. Here we go. And Randy, Randy is in there. Thank you so much, Randy. You are the winner of the RGB touch lamp. I know Jonathan talks hardware was in there too. He's kind of sad that he didn't win that one because he was totally in the chat telling me he wants that. But Randy, thank you so much. I will use your contact info that you put in there just for contacting you so we can figure out how to ship this thing out to you, but I really do appreciate it. Um, do you have to be in chat to claim? No, you don't, but Randy's here. He says, thanks. <laughs> so that's instantaneous. I love that. I'm going to check the YouTube chat one more time. Got another guy in here who says, Rare Apple. He says, hello, everyone. He's actually an editor 
of oh. ours. He's down uh, in the Southwest. I just had lunch and they're making me hungry now, Jonathan Talks Hardware says. And there we go. Definitely missing out. Now, Randy does point out an interesting thing. He says some of these have fiberglass in them. That could be interesting. Oh. So definitely check on the uh, Amazon site. They're going to have the info on the specs on that. I definitely would recommend that. But uh, we are at an hour and 37 minutes, which is exactly what we wanted to be. So I would call that a successful show. Yes. Any other closing thoughts? No, thank you for coming. <laughs> Awesome. I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. And I will catch you guys all in a future video.